the focus of my um, presentation will be on, on uh, study, showing you some of the trials we're doing on combining brain stimulation with uh, interventions, specifically cognitive radiation. Just as a disclosure, uh, specific to this presentation, the two trials I'll be talking about, uh, we, we've had some in-kind support. One is from SVD Pro for the cognitive remediation uh, online uh, uh, program. And the second is, uh, is online uh, in-kind support for the TDCS machines that we're using for the combination of MBSR plus, uh, plus uh, TDCS. So um, I don't think I need to convince this audience about the heavy weight of uh, Alzheimer dementia and dementias in general and worldwide, uh, uh, including in the US where more than 6 million people now live with Alzheimer dementia or, or, and uh, one in three people uh, die with Alzheimer dementia or another form of dementia. And as you know, despite some of the recent advances and some of the approvals, I think still it's uh, it's very hard to treat and make a major change in trajectory once the dementia stage of the illness uh, is, is set. So th that's why we and others, as, as you can imagine, we've been focusing on earlier stages or high risk conditions that increase the risk of developing dementia. And, and two particular uh, conditions or stages that we focus on in, in our studies, uh, and in particular the, the, two, the trial that I'll be talking a lot about today, one is MCI, which is mild cognitive impairment, which if we, these are individuals who have deficits on objective tests, on paper and pencil tests, for example, they're still living independently. And, and so those individuals are at significantly higher risk of developing dementia over time. Uh, and the second condition that's also has been more recently known that it significantly increases the risk of developing dementia is having history of depression. This is uh, relatively old now meta-analysis showing prospectively that people who have history of depression in late life, they are at double the risk of developing dementia. So we've been focusing on these two conditions to deliver interventions to try to prevent cognitive decline and, and, the, and the manifestation of a syndrome of dementia where functional impairment is manifest. The, the, the conceptual framework that guides a lot of our interventions is focusing on compensatory mechanisms to try to prevent cognitive decline. And, and this is one of the earlier models that was the, uh, proposed and talked about where aging and, and to that effect also disease-related uh, mechanisms affect certain networks and certain functional uh, functions specific. Uh, and, in compensation for that, uh, this model suggests that some association cortices like the prefrontal cortex sets in and contributes to, to compensatory cognitive mechanisms that could delay overall cognitive decline. So our studies are designed in a way that we believe aim at improving prefrontal cortical function and to optimize and increase compensatory mechanisms so that we can prevent cognitive decline and dementia in high risk in the, uh, people with high risk conditions. So, th so the study that I'll be talking more about uh, with the next few slides is called PACT-MD or preventing Alzheimer dementia with cognitive remediation plus TDCS or transcranial direct parent stimulation in MCI and depression. It it's a multi-site study uh, in Canada. The sites are in Toronto, but uh, in the funded uh, in Toronto, across several, several academic hospitals funded by uh, the Brain Canada Foundation. Um, and so what is TDCS? Uh, TDCS is a technology, is a simple tool that delivers direct current, uh, low voltage, two milliamp current, uh, that is a direct current simulation using an electrode and uh, using an anode and the cathode. And um, so that's that's photo actually of the actual method team from the Maxim and Euronica uh, developers. And you can see the, the two, these are the sponges that are placed depending on the location where excitation inhibition is meant to happen. I use this term loosely, even though we know that the network reacts maybe differently, but, but uh, just for the sake of presentation today, we, 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 the, the concept is that there is excitation 
under the where the anode is placed, which in, in our case we place it over the prefrontal cortex, and and there is a, the, the reference uh, where there is inhibition is under the cathode, which where we place at the back of the head at the um, IZ site. So uh, again, this is kind of for attention used and experimented with throughout history. Uh, th this is a photo of the Egyptian Nile catfish where uh, it used to, people used to be asked to, to put their feet in the liver and maybe uh, try to treat uh, arthritis or pain. Uh, some of the early um, uh, physicians from the early Arab world where they used uh, some electrical shock from fish to try to uh, treat melancholy or epilepsy and, and migraine. Um, so the, how does TDCS work? Um, it, it, TDCS, unlike TMS, so what, when you deliver a transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS to, to let's say the motor cortex that is um, related to the, to the hand muscle, for example, you see a twitch of the thumb, you see a twitch of the hand. So it does generate action potentials uh, from the motor cortex that's where it's, the simulation is happening. And TDCS does not result in this twitching. It does not result, the belief that it doesn't result in action potential, in activation firing of the neurons. But, but the thought is that based on preclinical work is that it, it changes the resting membrane threshold uh, of the underlying, on the underlying cortex so that this network or that, that particular cortex becomes more likely to respond to another intervention and more likely to, to, to result in longer lasting neuroplasticity changes. Um, so th this is the, the early studies of TDCS in the human were, were uh, like many brain simulation studies were done uh, over the motor cortex. This is one of the earlier studies uh, showing how after delivering TDCS for different, uh, for different uh, periods, here on the X axis, you see different, the number of minutes, uh, that you, you start seeing potentiation in response to the TMS or so that other intervention. So more sustained potentiation, more sustained enhancement of the motor evoked potential. So that's the activation from the hand muscle or the thumb muscle in response to TMS with, after stimulation using TDCS and that is anodal TDCS. So this is how one of the early ex experiments showing how TDCS could promote neuroplasticity, in this case, in the, in the motor cortex. Uh, at the time when we wrote the grant, uh, also th this is some of the earlier evidence showing, uh, one of the studies showing TDCS impact uh, in patients with Alzheimer dementia and, and showing uh, some potential benefit here. Uh, for This is our sm small studies with N of 15. Uh, this was the, the delivery here was uh, using bitemporal, so delivering over the two temporal cortices of anodal TDCS and, and uh, increasing uh, potentially number of correct responses on, on, on a memory task. Uh, th this, this also study, early study with TDCS, where uh, supporting, the supporting the idea that it's best used when it's combined with another intervention. So, so here, what, when this experiment, what was done, comparing TDCS delivered during the performance of a working memory task, uh, or specifically the NBAC task in people who have depression. So that's the online stimulation versus delivering TDCS before the uh, performance on the NBAC task and what, what and, and comparing sham versus active TDCS. And what, what was uh, shown in this study is that performance improved when the simulation was happening concomitantly, so in, 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 when, during this, the delivery of the cognitive task. Uh, so, so taking the evidence, and there is some more evidence, we don't have all the time to go over that at, at the time when we proposed this, the study. Uh, putting all that together, we proposed that we would like to uh, enroll individuals who have, are at high risk of developing dementia, particularly people with MCI or depression, uh, and depression with or without MCI, and, and uh, deliver to them uh, a course of um, an acute course of a combination of TDCS that was delivered in combination with cognitive remediation. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more uh, what the design of the intervention is. 
Um, so so with, the, with the idea that with the TDCS, we're changing the motor resting, the resting motor, uh, the, the threshold of stimulation, uh, and so that the network becomes more responsive uh, to the cognitive remediation. Um, and therefore, believing that the, the, the individuals will then benefit more from the cognitive remediation uh, by priming their network using TDCS. Um, so, uh, and, and again, going back to the model where we wanna target the prefrontal cortex and target more top-down processes so that we promote compens uh, the, the, the cognitive uh, remediation approach that we, we had, were uh, using in this trial, uh, led by uh, Dr. Christopher Bowie, um, focuses a lot, not only on drill and practice, but also on strategic uh, learning and, 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 uh, and, and promoting uh, the, 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 the transfer of the learnings that happen during the cognitive remediation session where people are doing the computerized exercises, but, but there is, during that session, there is a therapist and interventionist where they are leading a discussion and supporting the participants to how to transfer the learnings and the strategies that are learning from resolving those computerized uh, training to the real world function. So that strategic learning we believe is also promoting that top-down uh, process, processes that will be uh, optimized in the study that's at least the model, optimized using the brain simulation version or TDCS. Um, so the, these are the eligibility criteria for the, to participate in the trial. Um, for people, the group of the MCI, they have to be age 60 and meet the DSM-5 uh, criteria for, for uh, MCI or mild neurocognitive disorder. Uh, those who have, um, for the depression group with or without MCI, they have to be 65 and above. They had to be, they had to meet the criteria of the SM5 of, for MDD, but, but, uh, but they have to be in remission uh, when they participate. So the idea is that we're, 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 we don't want to focus on the cognitive functional impairment that is related to the acute state of depression, but, but that uh, people had to have a, uh, in, be in remission and still are at risk. We believe that they are still at risk, even though they are in depression, we know that they are at risk of developing dementia, whether they have MCI or, or not. Um, so that, that's the, so, uh, the, the, the overall design of the actual intervention. Uh, people get randomized to active cognitive mediation plus active TDCS versus sham and sham. And maybe in the discussion, we can discuss the pros and cons of, of this design. Uh, the, the, the cognitive, the, what is sham cognitive mediation? Th there are the, the key differences is that one, there is no titration of difficulty. So, so when people in the active, when people reach, let's say 80% of uh, correct performance, um, they, they get more challenged. So there is more neuroplasticity uh, um, driven processes in place. Um, and also th there is no focus on that transfer of information, transfer of the gains from the cognitive uh, remediation uh, to the real world. The TDCS, sh the sham TDCS is uh, based on the fact that they would only get a 30, about a minute of stimulation. There's a ramp up and ramp down and people get the sensation of the tingling sometimes that happens with the TDCS, but then uh, after that, there is no current being delivered. So there is an acute phase which uh, where people come to classes uh, uh, as a group, uh, up to eight people in a classroom, and it's five days a week for, for uh, eight weeks. Uh, and then after that, all participants are uh, asked to uh, engage in cognitive remediation from home remotely uh, at least 20 minutes a day. And then they come back to for booster sessions uh, every six months for one week. They get five days of combination of TDCS plus cognitive remediation. And that goes on um, until the end of the study or until they progress to developing uh, either from normal cognition to MCI or dementia or from MCI to dementia. Uh, the whole study is a seven year study and, and we are in the final stages, uh, final year of the study. So now people are wrapping up. So, so um, I, I'll show you the, the, the flow and the, the, the recruitment and, and where we are in the study, but we don't have the final uh, results yet. The, the plan is to analyze all the, and, and uh, have the, the results uh, next year. Um, 
And um, so there was a longitudinal, significant longitudinal follow-up between three to seven years based on when people started the, the, the trial. Uh, that, that's the schedule of the assessment. So they get assessment at baseline. They get the first follow-up after the acute uh, phase, which is after the eight weeks. And then every, uh, and that, after that, it's yearly assessment to, to, uh, to determine whether a person progressed uh, cognitively or um, to, to, um, from, to dementia or to MCI. Uh, so the, these are our hypotheses. The first hypothesis about, um, uh, it's about cognitive decline over the whole period of the trial. Uh, so it's using the continuous measure. And then um, the second hypothesis about categorical impact on the categorical uh, um, measure of, of, of developing MPI depression. We could change acutely after the eight week intervention, uh, irrespective of the impact on longitudinal over the seven year study. Uh, so that's our uh, flow to date. So we, we finished recruitment. And as I mentioned, we are in the last few months of the study. Uh, as you can see, we pre-screened a lot of people, more than uh, 1,400 people. Uh, the, the final sample here is we have 200 people with MCI, uh, 80 people with MDD plus MCI, and, and 96 uh, or no, sorry, 95 MDD without MCI. Well, what's been exciting is that retention the study has been very high in the 80% range um, uh, over the, over the trial. Um, so. Last couple of slides that we're adopting this approach of combining TCS with other intervention with other forms of intervention other than other than um, uh, cognitive remediation in a pilot study that we conducted in collaboration with uh, Eric Lenz at, at WashU. We combined TCS with with MBSR mindfulness based stress reduction, where uh, Eric and his team have shown that in older people with depression, depressive symptoms and anxiety symptoms, it could have an impact on, on cognition and, and memory specifically. So we, we, in, a, in a feasibility study, we, we, we tried to combine TDCS. We were delivering TDCS, receiving it while doing MBSR. We learned a lot about the challenges of doing that. And now we're thinking about what could the project look like uh, to optimize the use of TDCS during MBSR. But from an early signal, why we we're still interested in pursuing this line of work, because it, it seems that those who received the active TDCS, everyone received MBSR, but those who received the active TDCM seem to have learned mindfulness uh, better than those who received the uh, sham TDCS. And there was some signal on, on uh, the depressive symptoms and anxiety symptoms and, and some measures of quality of life. Uh, again, and, and this is a pilot, none of these were uh, statistically significant, but there was a pattern that was encouraging for us to pursue further. Um, and, and that's it, I'll, um, that, that's all my presentation. I wanna thank you for the invitation, thank all the audience here. And uh, these are uh, my, my collaborators, other PIs on the PACTMD study and, and many other collaborators and funding uh, uh, agencies who uh, supported this work over the years. Thank you.